Phenomenal scene for game two of our ABC triple header. Iowa, Iowa State for the 53rd time. The Hawkeyes ranked eighth in the country, along with Tim Brandt, Susie Schuster on the sideline, Mike Tirico. Hot day, temperature in the 90s. Overflow crowd on hand. Iowa won the toss, elected to receive. Tony Yelk set to kick it off, and off we go from A. Yelk with the win, bangs it all the way through the goalpost, and Iowa will take over at its own 20-yard line. The Iowa Hawkeyes quarterback by a man who was as good as it gets in the Big Ten in 2004. Hi, I'm Drew Tate. I went to Robert Lee High School in Baytown, Texas. I was 9 for 10 for two touchdowns last week. In a 56-0 blowout of Ball State. Leading the Hawkeyes, they've got nine straight wins. They haven't won 10 in a row since the 1920s. That's what's at stake here today against their in-state rival. First and 10, the opening drive starts from the 20-yard line. Albert Young, the running back in the fake. The first throw is incomplete. Intended for Ed Hinkle, Steve Harris on the cover. Let's introduce you to this uh, Iowa offensive team, the ball handlers on our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups. Clint Solomon, Ed Hinkle combined for 120 receptions. Albert Young, the sophomore, gets the start at running back with Bush and Majerus. Rounding out the five will touch it. Up front, Jones, Yanda, Brian Ferentz, the senior who's been off injured, the son of head coach Kirk Ferentz, with Mike Elgin and Ben Gates rounding out an offensive line to improve Iowa was not very good at running the ball last year second poorest in the country very atypical for Iowa but Tate made them go here comes Young into the secondary Albert Young chased down across midfield into the 45 a pickup of 34 yards on second down Mike early in ball games emotion really comes into play and the Cyclones defensively are so anxious to get to this ball. Everybody comes and overruns the play. So he cuts it back. And once he gets into the secondary, it's a foot race. So the linebackers aren't going to catch him. You've got to get outside. You've got to get those DBs on him to make the play. But that was emotion. That was over pursuit. And nobody had backside contained protection. So the first big play for the Hawkeyes. Play action. Tate looking deep. Pressured. And able to get rid of it and complete it. The ball's out. It's recovered by Iowa State. Ruled a completion and a fumble. And Matt Robertson has recovered for the Cyclones. They were trying to manufacture something from the get-go. First, Tate felt the pressure. So you'll see that on the play action, now he feels the pressure. He's going to roll a little bit. Now he's scrambling. They adjust to that and read his eyes. He got a man open. Now he's got to tuck it and run, but they converge when the ball's loose. Big turnover, the first of the game. DeAndre Jackson hit Tom Bush, knocked it free, so Brett Meyer, the sophomore captain for this Iowa State team, takes it from the 45 and loads up right away. Ball's good! Pass is complete. Big hit on Todd Blythe, but the sophomore holds on for a game. Smile and happy to get that first one is the quarterback for the Cyclones. Brett Meyer, Atlantic High School, Atlantic, Iowa. Atlantic, Iowa is near Omaha, a couple of hours away from here, right over by the Nebraska-Iowa border. Boy, Meyer came in last year, passed for a freshman best, 1,926 yards for Dan McCartney's team. How often do you see a captain that's a sophomore? He is the captain of this offense. That's how much they respect his ability. Seven on first down. Stevie Hicks first carry. First down for the Cyclones to the 45. Hicks is from Omaha, Nebraska. The top rusher the last couple of years here for Iowa State with Blythe and Davis and Flynn, the three receivers. Blythe coming off an offseason knee injury after he was a nine-touchdown catch man last year. Up front, Egbers, Pence, Stevenson, Zare, and Aaron Brandt. Ruled the best offensive lineman by the coaching staff after week one and coming into the season. He's a junior and that completes the Iowa State Outback Steakhouse starting lineups. First and ten for let Iowa go, State. Let it go. Let's Meyer go. throws wide open for the gain of about eight yards. To Walter Nickel, the junior out of Tacoma, Washington, the H-back on this Iowa State team. 
check the Iowa defense. Ooh, pronunciation change. Kenny Iwebema is the correct way to say it now. With Pearl, Wilcox, and Madison across the front, Iwebema won a few experienced men. If you know the Big Ten, you know Chad Greenway and Abdul Hodge may be the best pair of linebackers other than those guys in Columbus. In the secondary, Johnson, Merrick, Pascal, and Antoine Allen returning from a one-game suspension, his 39th career start. Game of seven, second and three, Stevie Hicks. Takes it close to the 35. That'll be right at the first down line, Abdul Hodge. One of those good linebackers in there on the tackle. Mike, when Iowa and Iowa State play, the running game is so important. As a matter of fact, let me give you an example. In Dan McCartney's five wins against the Hawkeyes, they've averaged almost 200 yards rushing. In the five losses, only 94 yards rushing. So this guy, Stevie Hicks, 27, is going to have to be big today. That plus the fact that once he starts getting the running game going, that'll free up guys like Todd Blythe, number one, who is always dangerous and right now is in the slot. Keep an eye on Blythe all day. Third and short, Ryan Cook comes in. The big back pounds forward. Four first down yards to the 31. Cook carried twice last week. Both were one-yard touchdown runs. Great job by the offensive line. You see him zone block. Everybody goes down to the right side, and they just follow him right up there. Now is the time on first down at the 31, Mike, where you look for Blythe. You take a shot deep. You've sucked him up with the run. Go over the top. Good opening drive for the Cyclones out of the Big 12. Hawkeyes out of the Big 10. Rare. Two conferences, yet same state. Empty formation. They're going to throw. Five options oh. for Meyer. Nearly intercepted. Well, he tried to test right away Javon Johnson, who had a 90-yard touchdown on a punt return last week, a 14-interception guy. We're looking for the man you were talking about, Tim. Well, Blythe is dangerous. That's the guy they want to get into a rhythm with. He's got 10 touchdowns in 13 games. Outstanding guy. Had some knee problems, had the ACL, but that's rehab, and he's in great shape. That ball just a little bit ahead. Good coverage. Iowa rotates two new defensive linemen in there, Mitch King, Mike Follett. They're not great up front, so they're trying to get energy and enthusiasm out of the guys on the field. Inside handoff to Hicks, filled at the 26. Charles Godfrey on the tackle will have third and five coming up. And one thing that will be a factor today will be the heat. It is in the 90s. There is a strong breeze right to left, about 20 miles an hour. But the twos, the second team guys, are going to have to play key roles here today. There's no question, Mike. And, Mike, I, and I think a guy like Greg Coleman, the backup running, who's just coming into the ballgame now to spell Stevie Hicks, I think he's got to have at least 10 carries today, at least. He's got to spell them. But on third down, it looks like they go to a passing formation. Just keep in mind, the quarterback, Meyer, is very dangerous on the run. Five wide. Meyer has bowled him. High throw deflected and intercepted. Adam Shada comes away with it and takes it to the 21-yard line. So each team a possession, each team has turned it over. The sophomore Shada, who started last week in place of Antoine Allen, comes up with the Iowa interception. It's one of those passes as a quarterback. You think you've thrown a pretty nice pass. He follows him all the way across the middle, but what he didn't read was the safety coming over and jumping the play, jumping in front, and then, of course, you get the deflection, and the chances are good for the offense when there's a deflection. As highly anticipated an Iowa-Iowa State game as we've had since the series restarted back in the late 70s. Each team turns it over on drive one. Back here in Ames, Mike Tirico, Tim Brandt, Susie Schuster will join us here in a second. 53rd meeting between Iowa and Iowa State. The Cyclones won five in a row in this series until the Hawkeyes have won the last two meetings between these teams. A series that started a century ago, had a four-decade disruption, but only a couple of hours separating Ames and Iowa City. They're back at it every year. Clinton Sullivan, the catch. He lost the football, but out of bounds, and it will stay with Iowa. Here is the aforementioned Susie Schuster. Suze? Well, Mike, if you want to know just how big this game is, beyond this grassy knoll and jam-packed Jack Trice Stadium, there are 30,000 people who showed up here without a ticket. They're not getting inside. They just came for the party. I talked to the keg shop in Ames, Iowa. They said they usually sell about 250 kegs a week, plus 600 this week. 
in the Pickman farm. The Wickman farm was barbecuing 80 pounds of pork out there. They're worried that they don't have enough food. <laughs> I talked to legendary Iowa coach Hayden Fry, who told me these people don't bet with money, they bet with their lives. <laughs> Albert Young the carry, he gains uh, about four or five. Sean Moorhead pulled him down. Susie, you're right about that. The uh, walk through the tailgaters, Timmy, about an hour ago. We broke away from the Michigan Notre Dame game. Big time. What a scene out Big there. Time. I mean, this is great. Big time. These people know food. <laughs> and <laughs> they know football. There's no question they know food <laughs> and football. And Dan McCartney knows this rivalry. 24th time he's been involved in Iowa, Iowa State. He's a native of Iowa City, where the Hawkeye campus is, and has done a terrific job rebuilding a moribund program over the last decade here in Ames. And officially two. Tate pressured and swung down. What pursuit by Tim Dobbins, the middle linebacker. Loss of 11. Hawkeyes kick it away. Cyclones allowed only 14 yards in total offense last week in the first quarter. Off to a good start here. They're bringing some blitzes, some zone blitz, some man. Here, of course, they bring on the corner, Berryman. He gets taken out. Dobbins' the linebackers come in, and he makes a vicious, vicious tackle. They'll be bringing four, five, six guys all day. Dobbins, the top newcomer in the Big 12 last year. John Gallery, brother of Robert Gallery, the number two overall pick a few years ago for the Raiders in an Iowa standout. He will punt. They will share the punting duties with Gallery and Andy Fenstermaker here today. This is into the wind. Play clock hit double Two zero. Time. Mike, the up back was trying to locate the overload, and he was trying to point where they had the block. So when he came up, the center wouldn't snap the ball till everybody was set. They outboxed themselves. So Gallery will try it from five yards farther back. Daniel Osta, the snapper, does trigger it. Into the wind. Fair catch called for and made by Ryan Baum, but that's a punt of only 30 yards into the wind. So great field position opportunity here for the Cyclones in this scoreless game. Iowa State will take over and back on the field comes their sophomore quarterback who made a pretty impressive mark in his first year. Brett Meyer, 13 freshman All-American, back on the field. Will you come back to Ames? Five or so from the state capital of Des Moines, there is Kirk Ferentz. The uh, successful head coach who's led Iowa to three consecutive double-digit win seasons, replacing Hayden Fry, his mentor. He was on Fry's staff at Iowa, as uh, many of you here in the state know, for nine years. Offensive line continues to get better under Barney Cotton, and they were strong in that first drive. Let's see what they do this drive. From the 45, Iowa State to the air with Brett Meyer with time. Downfield, breaking free, but just overthrown for Austin Flynn, the junior who tried to reel in that touchdown. Oh, we talked about this rivalry. Kirk Ferentz has been a part of it 16 times. He knows what this game is all about. This is my 16th game involved, and I found out real quickly in 1981, my first year, just how, how uh, uh, important this game is on both sides. Uh, you know, everybody's uh, extremely into it players, coaches, certainly the fans, and I think the thing that's unique about this year is uh, the interest level is a lot higher outside of the state lines than in years past. Because Iowa State coming off uh, Big 12 North co-champion season, and movement by Iowa State's wide receiver will negate this snap, and there is uh, no fumble on the play. And Webber came in there and knocked the quarterback down. We have Big Ten officials tonight, or today I should say, Again, they say emotion gets in the way of concentration. Offense, number one, five yards, the down remains, second. One of the least penalized teams in the country last year. Then last week they came out and they had a bunch of penalties, six penalties, 60 yards, and now you have one of your veterans, Todd Blythe, sophomore, but played in all the games till he hurt his knee, jumped a little bit. So after the walk-off, second and 15. Let it go, let it Another go. pass look. It is complete for about five yards to John Davis. They'll mark him up at the 45. Javon Johnson in on the tackle. Let's talk about the rivalry for a second. We heard Kirk Ferentz talk about it, Tim. Rarely do you get in-state 
Division 1A schools for a long time, not in the same conference, so they cover the same recruiting ground. A lot of the guys know each other. They have a little sauce and spice to this rivalry. Absolutely, and Mike, they went 40 years without playing, so when they finally got back together in the 70s, that game was huge, but I don't think, as we said in the open, this game is as big as it's ever been. This is the biggest Iowa-Iowa State game because of the championships they had last year, because of their records, because of their success, where these programs are going, and they're both 1-0. and Third, and a dozen. Let it go, let it go! Meyer oh, lets it go down the sideline. It is incomplete, a deep ball intended for Blythe. So they are going to Blythe a lot here in these opening two drives, but Meyer and Blythe just not able to hook up. Strong wind at Meyer's mm -hmm. back, and it's sailing on him a little bit. But let me make a point here. The coaches on the sideline are telling him when to release the ball. It doesn't matter how strong or weak your arm is. It's when you release the ball. And if you listen closely, you can hear from the sideline every time he throws, let it go, let it go, let it go. They want him to throw on time. Tony Blankenship will punt five punts last week. Trying to angle it away from Hinkle and to the corner. Perfect, perfect job by the senior out of Cedar Rapids. Blankenship pins them at the three. The punt is 44, but worth even more for Dan McCartney's team. Long field for Iowa. Drew Tate and company back at it when we come back. Iowa State's defense has been stout thus far. Scoreless here in the first in a long field for the Hawkeyes to deal with. Sophomore Albert Young will be the running back for Iowa. And he finds a crease. Look out. Young with one man to beat. Takes it deep in the secondary. Albert Young, who was very strong running the ball last week, gains 31 yards on first down. Nick Mosier able to get him in the secondary. Another great job by this offensive line as two really big runs. But you see they've got the trap. They bring the fullback up, stop it right there. And look at the, look at the running lane now he has to the outside. He reads it, reacts to it, gets out there, and he knows now it's just a foot race. But great job by the offensive line. They had the little trap up front, the linebacker, I mean, the uh, fullback filled, and he read it all the way. Right back to Young, who has stopped at the 35, gain of one. Tim Dobbins, who made the big play there, the big play on the last series, got suckered in on that trap before. Sean Moorhead, Nick Leaders, Brent Curvey, and Jason Berryman, who was incarcerated this time last year, has served his time back out on this field and playing and playing well in the first game. There's Dobbins, best newcomer in the Big 12, with Harper and Robertson. In the secondary, LaMarcus Hicks, DeAndre Jackson. The quarters will be tested. Jackson was beat for two long touchdowns in the game last week against Illinois State. High snap the count. over the head of Tate. Young and Tate go back. They didn't get it. Berryman did. Two Hawkeyes were there. A marker comes in very late. Berryman has recovered. We'll check the flag. It could be Cyclone Ball in the red zone. Hot day. A lot of sweaty guys out there. You don't know if that was just an error or what happened. Brian Ferris, the coach's son, is the center for Iowa. Talking about when this flag may have occurred in terms of having to dole out the penalty and the possession as well. Dino Paginelli, the back judge, in there with uh, Dave Whitford on the conversation. A very lengthy chat. It could be a second Iowa turnover here and the third turnover in the first half of the quarter. to play. An illegal crackback block on the offense, number 11. That penalty is declined. Other way, first down. First there down. 4 3 defense. They were on the shoulder of Ferentz's center. But here's leaders right there, and they're going to double team him. He's more concerned about the All American leaders, and because of that, he snaps high and fast. He's thinking more about the double team and slotting down on the defensive tackle than he was on the snap. And Tate running back couldn't locate the ball. Berriman hops on it, and a golden opportunity for the Cyclones. Greg Coleman comes in as the lone running back. Well spotted at the 12. Meyer on a designed run. Stopped for no gain. 
Mike Follett, who was a tight end, moved to defensive line at a West Des Moines, a senior, makes it second and ten. Fun to watch Brett Meyer. He's so dangerous with his feet. Now, they are trying to teach him, just as a sophomore, to get more comfortable and don't bail out as early. Go through your progressions, look at all your receivers, see what the coverage is, and then go. But his natural ability, when he turns it loose and just runs and gets to the outside, unbelievably dangerous. Iowa State has some good size in receiver. Getting close to where they can take advantage. Pressure's on, five in the pattern. Underneath, it's complete. Touchdown, Cyclones! Austin Flynn! It's going to be fun here today, folks. It's going to be a very good game. Crowd is stoked. Both teams into it. Tony Yelk on for the extra point. Kicking was a problem all last year and last week and continues here today. Yelk, the sixth-year senior, bangs it off the uprights. So the one thing that kept Iowa State out of the Big 12 championship game last year and gave them problems in the opener keeps it 6 nothing. Meyer and Flynn read the blitz. They're bringing this blitz like this. They're coming here, and they're coming like this. All of a sudden, Brett Meyer reads that. Flynn does as well. He feels the outside pressure, steps up. There's Flynn. There's your former quarterback who understands routes, open areas, soft areas. Meyer through the strike. Touchdown, Cyclones. Well, reason to believe early on for the Iowa State fans. Here is our Nissan drive summary. A quickie, two plays and a dozen yards. Set up by that fumble recovery by Berriman. The touchdown pass from Brent Meyer to Austin Flynn, the junior. Tim mentioned he's a quarterback his first two years and actually uh, set some freshman marks in Iowa State history. But once again, the inability of Iowa State to convert placement kicks becomes a problem as the extra point was missed so it is six nothing as Iowa is set to return that becomes a mental thing after a while I mean they've struggled with the kicking game extra points and field goals are an adventure I think right now it's in their head should be unreturnable these kicks with the uh, with the wind, strong sure. wind and yelp a strong leg and has banged the first one through the goalpost this one will be returned maybe not look at that thing you got up there. It's like your drive. It just stays up there in the air for a long time. <laughs> right? It's like a golf shot. <laughs> just hanging there. And Iowa will take it out from the 20-yard line. So the Hawkeyes trail here for the first time in 2005. I mean, Why Iowa, are we both thinking golf? That's yeah, what I want to know. Because there's a golf course right over there on the other <laughs> We're side. Watching of the, these guys play on the other side of the stadium. That's right. Behind the East stands here. You don't know what sport you're broadcasting today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, offensive coordinator Ken O'Keefe's crew has had a, essentially, with all due respect to Ball State, a controlled scrimmage last week. Oh God, as for oh Hinkle, God. is incomplete. Penalty marker will be thrown here. Well, They're going to call pass for on LaMarcus Hicks, and I know what you're going to say, and I'm with you. No, I tell you, Hicks was reading it, he was reacting, and he was going for the football. I don't like that flag at all. Pass interference, defense number 24. Spot foul, automatic first down. Now, right technically away. he's right but here's the deal I mean you've got these guys right here one-on-one -on -one. now watch he's reading it he's watching the ball he's not seeing the guy so he does get there a little bit early it's a good call I don't like it being a former defensive guy because he's got every right to that football if he just gets a head step in front of him not exactly only would he right. avoid the exactly flag. right that was his problem he didn't step in front of him no, he flag. did jump it quickly he made a pick six if he would have cut in front of him but again think, into the wind I don't think he ever saw the defender he's watching the ball all the way with it Second and ten. Now first and ten, excuse me, Albert Young the carry, and he gets just a couple of yards. Gain of two. Tim talked about the havoc that Nick Leaders caused on that bad snap by Brian Ferentz that led to the turnover, that led to the touchdown. Leaders made that tackle. He's a captain, a four-year starter. His dad, who has uh, since passed away, and his brother played here at Iowa State. So Nick Leaders, a uh, familiar name to Iowa State fans and brings great passion to this rivalry here this afternoon. You know what amazes me about leaders is he's 6'2", 290, and he runs like he's a tailback or a linebacker. Officially a gain of two. Second and eight. Steady diet of Albert Young just trying to pound it in there. And we'll 
Third down coming up after Steve Paris knows it up from his free safety spot. Made the tackle. I'm telling you right now, leaders, it's going to be a really solid NFL guy. Mm. Just watch him that time. Skate down the line. He's got such great arm strengths. He keeps the, the lineman off of him, slides down right into the hole. Need to get to the 34 for a first down. Champ Davis has come in the game as the lone back. Four receivers for Tate, who can't find anybody open. Now throws on the run. And it's caught for the first down at the 45 by Ed Hinkle. Into a lot of traffic. Adam Carper makes the stop. But a first down throw to Hinkle. Drew Tate is an interesting guy. You know, he just buys time. He sees the field so well. He's got great vision. Right about now, Tate's scrambling. He doesn't know whether he's going to run or throw. But just as he starts to step up, he sees Hinkle clear and hits him right up at the line of scrimmage. He's at the line of scrimmage when he throws that pass. Play action with Young, looking downfield, incomplete. Again, throwing into the wind, Clinton Solomon, the intended receiver. Sam Ryan with us on the sideline last week in Columbus, in the studio in New York this week. Hello, Sam. All right, Sam, thank you. Cramping up there at the end of the run, but still able to escape for Oklahoma, messing around with Tulsa into the fourth quarter. What's going on over in Norman? Still only get the win. Second down carry for Young. Three to about the 47-yard line. Well, third down, Matt Robertson, junior out of Florida. What, what's a Florida guy doing in this game? He comes <laughs> up to make the tackle. Get that Florida speed. He's Mike. at a sunrise, played the Mike linebacker. The middle backers move to weak side now. You know what, Drew Tate, where's that number five? Because he's five years younger than his brother, Lake. His brother used to stick him in the locker in the high school. <laughs> locker number five is where he dressed, so he wears number five all the time and says he's tougher for it. I mean, really stick him in there, like you're not coming out. No, you'd hear banging before practice was hit in the locker. That pass is deflected, and Tate, let's see if he's able to hang on to it. They're going to rule it incomplete. It did hit the ground after the deflection. Tate went chasing after it. It was Adam Harper coming in on the blitz who deflected it. And it's fourth down, so Iowa unable to get it across midfield. And the defense, coordinated by John Spladini, does the job again. And the defense right now is playing with a lot of confidence. They're bringing some stunts. They're playing. They're coming off the corners. They're coming off the edge. They're coming up front. He's bringing the corners sometimes. He's bringing the safeties. They are very aggressive right now and extremely confident. This time, Andy Fenstermaker punts into the wind. Fair catch called for and made by Ryan Baum. A 32-yard punt with no return. Well, the NFL weekend started on Thursday night with the Patriots' win over the Raiders. Monday night, it wraps up. Al Michaels, John Madden, Michelle Tafoya in Atlanta. Rematch of the NFC Championship game from January. The Eagles and Michael Vick and the Falcons. McNabb and Vick. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. I saw the Falcons over in Tokyo this preseason. I like that team to maybe make it to Detroit in Super Bowl 40. Well, now hear this. The Eagles are loaded. Whether they're talking or not, they're loaded. <laughs> First down, Stevie Hicks on the carry. Kept his legs going to get two yards to the 22. I mean, talking's overrated. We don't speak to each other except when we have to do the game. Exactly right, and it works. <laughs> so we think. <laughs> Inside of four minutes here in this first quarter. We mentioned opening games, and what do you see out of an opening game? Stevie Hicks had good numbers last week against Illinois State. Iowa State messed around a little bit with the team from 1AA. 32-21, tied at eight and a half. I think people around here were a little worried about what the Cyclones had. It's showing up well here in the opening quarter. Let it go, let it go! Down pass, high toss, but reeled in by John Davis. There's some of that size of receiver. Watch that as the day goes on. He's 6'4 out of Nebraska. Miguel Merrick made the tackle. Well, here were some of the issues last week, Tim. They allowed 69 yard fumble return for a touchdown, 56 and 80 yard touchdown passes, and those, as you said, were, you know, when they were in a soft coverage and over the top. Iowa State really is not a penalized team. Six penalties, two turnovers, two sacks allowed. This is the least penalized team, mistake free team in the country last year, one of the top 12. And here they are make, doing that early. So the coaches certainly weren't happy and they played better here in the first half. John Davis's completion, good enough for a first down. And here's Stevie Hicks running over the right side, delivers the blow and takes it out to the 30. That's a nice seven yards or so. 
on first down before Marcus Pascal can come up from his free safety spot and make the tackle. It's a thousand yard rusher from last year. He does need a break though, Mike. I mean, he's a thousand yard rusher. He needs at least 100 yards today. He only had 90 last week. Coleman's got a spelling some because it is hot. He's a guy that really plays low, put pad to pad, as you see right there. He'll lay a lick into the safeties and the linebackers. And because of that, Greg Coleman has to, and I'll say it again, has to get at least 10 carries today to, to give him a breather. He's behind the sophomore captain, Brett Meyer. Coleman has it. Okay, we're done. And he's going to be right at the first down mark. Those off talked about linebackers, Hodge and Greenway there in the middle. But first down for Iowa State. That was the lineman Kroll who helped Greenway on that tackle. One thing I noticed in the tape that when Hicks does get tired and his legs get a little weary, mm -hmm. starts cramping up a little bit, as the game goes on, he gets a little bit higher. Okay. He's usually a very low runner and a pad, pad guy. You know, he's a leverage guy. But as he gets tired, he comes higher. He's straight up and uh, straight up and down. He gives the tackler a better target. Some talk uh, this week. Hey, Iowa State played the full game, had to play into the fourth quarter. Iowa had most of the starters out late first quarter in Iowa City last week. Loading up was Meyer. Nothing open. Trying to scramble, and he'll lose a couple of yards. Brought down by Mike Follett. So here's a guy who was a tight end, and they were so desperate for defensive line experience that they moved Follett back to the defensive side. That's what you have to do when you lose four starters who were seniors and got NFL looks this year. It's a good point. You'll see coaches that are successful normally take their best players and move them over to defense. Not always the skilled guys, obviously, the quarterback, the wide receivers, but you will take a couple of those guys, those quarterbacks and wide receivers, put them on the defense. You'll take some fullbacks, some linemen, and move them the other side. Gives you quickness. Plus, you want your best guys over on defense. Second and 12, there is Hicks. You defensive guy, you. Loses three yards. Mitch King comes up from his defensive tackle spot. He's a second teamer. So uh, Iowa rotating eight. Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for this bunch, been around Iowa City for a long time as his group staying fresh because that, that's their question mark up front. In the back, the backers in the secondary, they feel pretty good. But Parker's defensive line is the really questioned unit on this team. You know, back to Hicks for a second. He was responsible for more than half of ISU's running game last year. He's got to get this thing going. Third and 15, Myers looking toward Blythe. He's covered, takes off on the run, needs to get to the 49 for the first down. What an open field tackle to deny him of that first down. One more move and he was going to get there, but Javon Johnson will force an Iowa State punch as we head to the end of the first quarter. And if I'm Iowa State, I hustle and get this one off with the wind, by the way. You're looking at the same angle Brett Myers looking at it. He sees plenty of open field. But watch, Javon, I'm telling you, Johnson comes up, he's a small corner, but that was a sure open field tackle. Final play of the quarter with the win, kicked out of bounds, and Iowa will take over at its own 15-yard line when quarter two begins. 40-yard punt for Blankenship. Through one in Ames, 6-0, Iowa State leads. The ABC Sports presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from your ABC station. We hate the Hawk guys. Go Cyclones! Go Cyclones. I hate the Hawks. Go Cyclones! The whole season comes down to this game. Even if we lose every other game, as long as we win this one. Go Cyclones! Woo! Little feel of the uh, students here on the campus in Ames. Iowa City will get its equal time later on in the game. First and ten with a win to their back through team from the 15. First down pass is complete all the way out to the 42-yard line. So quite a change there as Ryan Majerus, the tight end, comes in and gets a gain of 27. You know, Mike, you're talking about uh, the Cyclones and what they're doing in the wind here today. Thursday, we had a tornado. We had winds of up to 83 miles per hour on campus. They thought that might have been an omen right here, you know, with the Cyclone coming through, the tornado touching down right on campus, right by the stadium. Fortunately, uh, nobody not, was hurt, yep. seriously. Exactly. You see that uh, win that we're talking about now at the back of Tate and Iowa. So let's see if they open it up a little bit more. Play action to Young. Tate has some time. Throws incomplete for Clinton Sullivan, his senior receiver out of Fort Worth. And one of the reasons he couldn't get it there, he was getting hit while he was trying to get it there by Jason Berryman. The defense for Iowa State doing a great job disguising things, mixing things up, and giving different looks to Tate. Now, Tate is one of these guys that reads defenses extremely well. He also goes through his progression, but he's taking licks every time he releases the ball. 
they're giving him tough pre-snap reads so he doesn't have a real good hold of where he's going with the football when it's snapped and then he's got to go through that progression it's taken a little bit longer and they're getting to it right on the edge of a late hit i think iowa left a little bit early this play is coming back whistled down by the line judge john chorus looks like one of the iowa receivers released early false start offense number seven five yard penalty the down remains second that's eric mccollum out of south carolina mr football in south carolina a couple of years ago and this has been a problem for the hawkeyes in 2004 eight penalties a game it doesn't fit the personality of kirk ferentz who runs a very tight ship a good program a very organized program now, you don't expect a team that's well coached to make that many penalties but they do but a lot of them are aggressive penalties and that's not always bad these are the bad ones exactly the last two and right. i think the one before this was because they were a little bit anxious official timeout previous players being reviewed okay the previous play is being reviewed and reviewing a false start hmm. Dan McCarty saying, what are you talking about reviewing this? Moved? Was he reset? We'll get a clarification. This is one of those things, Mike, I love instant replay. Always have. It was great in the game we just saw. You know, to, to my knowledge, false start is a non-reviewable play. I'm just checking the list here. That's actually, plays that may not be reviewed with the use of video replay include false starts now we have the big 10 officiating crew but the big 12 replay officials are here for the game today there you see uh, the non-reviewable instant replay calls and false starts is on that list I find it interesting uh, here is the play the slot receiver clearly across the line of scrimmage 14 29 okay what they did was review the clock, the clock. to go back and that was a which is reviewable yes. sure that is and that's well done since it was a play that was whistled dead so there should not have been time coming off the clock they were right on it and brought it back to the correct time saving 21 seconds and McCartney's asking the same thing Dan McCartney has done here in Ames is something that he knew was a large mountain to climb because he coached at Iowa State or at Iowa on the same staff. Well, wait a minute now. The problem is they've got to mark off the penalty. There was a false start. We just saw the slot man was across the line of scrimmage. Did they mark off the penalty? But you know what? That may have been the buzzer got to the official and he was blowing the whistle before this penalty occurred. Be for the clock adjustment. Exactly. So even though that would have been I a penalty, I, I, it, it I, might I be negated. Well, Dan McCartney's asking the same thing I am. Was that not a false start? And when did the whistle blow? The one that would have been on the offensive lineman here when they buzzed down from the replay booth to say, hey, that last one, we've got to go correct. Next play starts, you can't review the one before, but okay. I'm not sure the whistle blew. It looked like he was across the line of scrimmage. Kind of take my back here, partner. <laughs> it's been a long 31 seconds here in the second quarter. All right, so just off the last penalty, second and 15, and here is Young. Albert, shy of the 40, third and about a dozen ahead. Like with his Iowa State defense has shown so far, John Scladani coaches the linebackers as well. This team allowed only 140 yards rushing per game last year. That was the best in the post-World War II era of Iowa State football. Nick Leader's having a great game. They're trying to double-team him every time he touches the football here. Now they're even pulling on his jersey, but he still finds his way to the football. He pointed out during the break that he's having a terrific game so far. Drew Tate saying, guys, get set. We've got to get it off before the play clock. He does. It's third down. He's flushed again. Throws for Solomon. Well covered. The back end doing a nice job. Brent Gervais came in with the pressure up front. Coverage on the back end, DeAndre Jackson. And leaders leads the defense off the field. Another three and out. 
So they make the stop, but I tell you what, I, I still think the call came down from the replay booth late. You can't you can't run the next play and review a play, and I think that one already started. But they got the call from upstairs. They got buzzed. They stopped it second after a split second after it started. Bottom line, no second penalty. Punt rotation. John Gallery's turn with the win gets a nice kickoff. Ryan Baum to return from the 12 with some space now. Big hit to the 24-yard line, but a nice return of 13 yards as he was tackled by Adifa Shelton for Iowa. The punt was 48, the return 11. Iowa State controlling the game here in the first 16 and a half minutes, leading 6-0. Fifty thousand crammed into every corner of Jack Trice Stadium. Thousands outside who just came to tailgate and have a good time. And we say hello. I know a lot of you are watching on TV out in the parking lots around the stadium here in Ames. Watching Brett Meyer, the sophomore quarterback from Atlantic, Iowa, southwest corner of the state. Leading Iowa by the score of 6-0 here, early second quarter. Like you mentioned, the All-Americans, Matt Roth and Jonathan Babineau, who are gone off this defensive line. And the line has been challenged by the coaches. They haven't been getting the pressure. But watch how they use number 18, Chad Greenway, the linebacker. They'll cheat him up. They'll almost use him like an extra defensive lineman to get that extra push, to get that extra fill, to get that extra pressure. Greenway 18, Abdul Hodge 52. Those two excellent Iowa linebackers. They try to run Stevie Hicks on first down. He's denied by Ken Iwebama. He's getting his second career start. Sophomore out of the Dallas suburb of Arlington, Texas. You see Meyer in the game as this defense tries to chase down the quarterback. As a freshman last year, was the MVP in the Independence Bowl, ran for over 120 yards. He led a fourth quarter drive at Kansas State, 345 yards in that game. So in the big games in Iowa State's run to share the conference title and the postseason, the sophomore came up big. Quick pitch and catch with Austin Flynn, who extends across the 34. Give him the first down at the 35. Gain of 11. Greenway the tackle. And Mike Myers' continued development is what will define state season. There is absolutely no question about it. And how he does the rest of the afternoon will determine how they do here. But again, he reads well. And there's Flynn, who reads with him, the former quarterback. He felt the pressure, looked, hit the quick slant. Bingo. You know, Meyer, for a sophomore to be voted captain by his teammates, very quiet, understated. He's not a very verbose young man, but really has impressed his teammates. Stevie Hicks trying to find some space in there, gains just a yard or two. But as we sat with him yesterday, what a good looking athlete Meyer is at six foot four and 205 pounds. Like the guy that's been quiet so far for Meyer has been Todd Blythe. He only has one catch, and he's their star go to guy. And although Austin Flynn is your leading receiver, the big star, of course, is Meyer, and Meyer loves to go to Blythe. But here's uh, Halle Berry, who, who doesn't? <laughs> Come on. See Keith Sims mentioned there, the lineman in the league for many years. Here's Meyer using his running ability, takes it to the 40, and before he plays third down, Susie Schuster can tell us more about the quarterback. Well, Mike, Dan Meyer remembers the day that changed his life. He was driving his semi in inner city Chicago and was struck emotionally by the underprivileged kids following his truck when he was making deliveries. He and his wife, Beth, decided to adopt a child from there. They got a lookbook from the Illinois State Book filled with kids who were available for adoption, and one jumped out at them with chubby cheeks and a sparkle in his eye. They brought him back to Gilbert. He was raised with two natural siblings and one else adopted. He says he wonders what if all the time. What if they hadn't taken me out of there? What if I was one of those kids who was shot well, from part of the gang in an inner city? He says the what if for him never has to be answered, and the payback for his parents is the joy that they share in watching him take this field. Susie Myers passed there incomplete. They wanted the pass interference on Javon Johnson. We'll have fourth down, but uh, truly My great story. Yeah, Myers' story, uh, you see him as an athlete, you see such a good player, and then you find out that uh, he was adopted and taken from a rough neighborhood in a rough situation and uh, really has had his life turned around uh, by his parents, who you saw there, his adoptive parents uh, in, the, in the stands. Really gives you an idea of what the young man has overcome just to get this far. Troy Blankenship kicking into the wind, and Hinkle runs up and fair catches it at the 31-yard line. 28 yards on the kick. Before we step out, we'll uh, 
Let your mind work during the break with the Aflac trivia question. Dan McCartney's coach, a 3,000-yard passer, 2,000-yard rusher, 1,000-yard receiver. Three other coaches have had that. 3,000 passer, 2,000 rusher, 1,000-yard rusher. Can you name those coaches? Work on it during the break. Soybean production. State of Iowa. Those beautiful gardens on the front entrance of the campus. Windy day across the flatlands here in the American heartland. Winds gusting near 20 miles an hour, even higher in the western part of the state today. 6-0 Iowa State leads. They missed an extra point after a touchdown catch by Austin Flynn in the first. First down run for Albert Young in Iowa, taking it to the 37-yard line. A good five-yard first down pickup for the sophomore out of New Jersey. Cephas Johnson is in there on the tackle. Iowa, for many years, has had a good presence of... Uh, skilled position players from the New York area that during the Hayden Fry days and Dan McCartney's uh, old boss Hayden Fry did that and now being followed up upon by Kirk Ferentz. Thought his own blocking up front. They just haven't been able to get to the holes. Defense is slicing down. They're all cheating. They're stemming and they're moving. Second and five. There's a man waiting for Young again. He's able to absorb the first contact and get three. We'll have third and two coming up, Tim. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. And for Iowa, it has been a first half of mistakes. They've really struggled. Been able to turn the ball over. This was early in the ball game. Stripped, fumbled. Tip, interception. Ferentz, bad snap over Tate's head. And then the touchdown pass from Meyer to Austin. Has not been the first half Iowa Hawkeyes envisioned. Third and two, Tate will throw and complete it for the first down. Just shy of midfield with Scott Chandler, the second of four. Good tight end. Iowa always has good tight ends. Chandler, out of Texas, keeps this drive going. Mike, you have the feeling that Drew Tate really hasn't gotten comfortable yet. He's got to find his rhythm. He's got to get this offense moving. They've been stymied every time they have it. They've hurt themselves. They've had those interceptions and snaps we just showed you. But you look at his numbers. Last week, he was 9 of 10. He's a 4 of 9 here in the first half. He's much better than that. And he just hadn't found his rhythm yet. But the safety's deep. A little oh. pump and go for Tate is intercepted. Bad throw that time. Steve Paris was waiting and takes it to the 46-yard line. And Tate may be shaken up after getting his head in there on the hit. I think the quarterback took the worst of it, and he's down on that far sideline. So Tate upset that he threw the pick, trying to make up for it by laying the hit. And uh, the class of all the athletic trainers around college football, the Iowa State staff right there to be with Tate until the Iowa trainers come over. Again, Mike, he didn't look like he was comfortable. He made the tackle on the return, and that's where he got his head hit hard. He went helmet to helmet, but this was one of those things. They were in a zone coverage, did a little pump fake, didn't see the free safety. Watch this. Here's your pump fake. That's the hook and go. He never sees the free safety. Throws it up, and here comes Steve Paris over to make the pick. Now watch, here comes Tate trying to make the tackle on the return, and they go helmet to helmet. Bam! Great effort by Tate, but you don't want your quarterback making this kind of tackle and going helmet to helmet. He is uh, jogging off, uh, hopefully for Iowa's sake. He was just dazed, but that's how three turnovers here for the Hawkeyes in this opening half. And a mistake with the wind at that time. They were waiting for it, though. Iowa State was looking for that first down deep toss. These safeties were back deep. Here comes Stevie Hicks. Delivers the blow in the secondary. Antoine Allen, the tackle. The gain was nine. Let's take another peek at Tate getting his, quote, bell rung. I think they both did. I think Paris got his rung a little bit. Tate got his. I mean, that is just helmet-to-helmet contact. Steve Paris out of Dallas hits Drew Tate out of Baytown, Texas. Baytown's about 30 minutes away from Houston. A lot of people don't realize that's why you wear a mouthpiece, and hopefully he had his in, because the mouthpiece is not only to protect your teeth, but to prevent concussions. Gain of nine on first down for Stevie Hicks. Second and one for Bang Hicks, working on the inside and take it to the 40-yard line. Tim, are you surprised? that the line of scrimmage, both sides, is being controlled by Iowa State thus far. I'm definitely surprised. We were talking about this at the break. I didn't think Iowa State's defense, especially the front, was as quick as it is. 
but it has responded. And offensively, I mean, they're just out muscling them out front. Stevie Hicks is finding the holes, and he's banging his way through there. Hicks is an outstanding running back. First down, going into the stiff wind, Iowa State leading 6-0. Hicks gallops into the hole on the left side and gains just three yards, but if they can keep running and keep running, maybe they'll be able to take a chance downfield. He's just a workhorse. Over 1,000 yards, as you said, last year, 1,062. But he's got the size to run through you, the feet to run around you, and he stays low. He's a leverage back. He's got great vision, too. I like what Barney Cotton, Tim, the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach, said about Hicks. 90 yards last week in the opener, not acceptable. And that tells you what Iowa State wants to do and establish the run, even though they can spread it like they have now with five wides. Throw down the middle. It's a complete sure is. First down, Blythe at the 27-yard line. Great Second reception. Hands. Great hands. Took it right off the turf. It's a shoestring catch. Here he is out here. Going to go like this. Now watch him. Here he comes across the middle. Now watch him go down and get this ball right off the oh, ground, get nice. his hands under it, and then roll over to protect it. Big time play. Todd Blythe, tall at six foot five, stock boy at Walmart. Dad threw it in baseball. That's what made that catch for him. <laughs> From the 27, Stevie Hicks, the only back to carry on this drive. The two yards of the 26 yard line. And second down coming up, this is an Iowa State team that last year shared the North Championship in, in the weaker half by far of the Big 12. They went four and four, but did go seven and five on the season. They were picked last, and the title was the first share of a football title of any sort they've had since 1912. It's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> you know, I I'm watching this offensive line. It just gets better and better under second-year coach Orny Cott. Second down, Meyer moves it. Runs it, got a good block to get four yards to the 21. Ben Barkema, a sophomore on Iowa State, whose brother CJ plays for Iowa, a reserve tight end. Well, Ben for Iowa State made the good block that time. I want you to watch the offensive line now. They're all going to turn to their left. This is called zone blocking. Now go ahead and roll it. Watch these guys. It's almost like a pirouette. And they're going to shove everybody that way. Meyer's going to come the opposite way, buy some time, and pick up a few yards. Again, they go empty here. Third and four. First down away to the 17. Meyer pressured. Throws for Blake. He hung on. First down at the 13. The lick was coming. Life able to hang on and keep the drive alive. Something I want you to look for. Blight is 6'5", and he's gone against short corners. Johnson is only 5'9", Allen on the other side is 5'10", and then you've got Pascal who's 6 feet, barely. You know, so he's working on guys that are just barely 6 feet, and he is 6'5". Throw it a little bit high, let him go up and get it. There is a mismatch there. That's what they ought to use right now in a timing pattern to the end zone. He's tall and there's toughness, too. Life is in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Run formation with Hicks. Iowa well schooled there. No gain. Second down coming up. Mitch King in there on the tackle. We spin towards five minutes left. Second quarter. Number eight, Iowa held off the board. Their quarterback, Tate, shaken up on the last drive. And Susie Schuster, what can you tell us about the starting quarterback? Well, he's got a slight concussion. Questionable about coming back. And as you look down on the sidelines, you're going to see their backup quarterback warming up here. He's coming into the game, Jason Manson. Well, let me tell you, Susie, last week's win over Ball State big was huge because what it did for Manson was get him some playing time. And he went 9 for 9, 92 yards. Might be dealing with a double-digit deficit. Second and 11 out of the gun. Slant is incomplete, nearly intercepted, but a half step away from an Austin Flynn touchdown. It was Miles, the linebacker, in there with pressure. Johnson on the coverage for the Hawkeyes. You know, not just Blythe is, is a mismatch guy, but you've got Davis on the other side at 6'4", and Flynn six one and a half. So all the receivers for the Cyclones are bigger than the Hawkeye cover guys. And that's it. They went after 5'9", Javon Johnson there. But the pass was low. You took away your advantage. A third down coming up. Again, field goal kicking has been a complete disaster for Iowa State the last year plus. From here, a field goal will be 31 yards into the wind. They can get a first down inside the three. They'll run with Hicks. 
They get it to the 12, so they'll come and try the 29-yard field goal. Crowd didn't like that call. Too conservative. I don't think the booth agreed with the call either. No, and I, well, <laughs> and you've got to admit, Iowa State's kicking game has been an adventure. Yes. Their extra points. Hawkeye special teams have blocked 11 kicks the past two seasons, including two punts against Iowa State in 2003. And now the extra point becomes an adventure. Now here we are with a short field goal. So at least I think I would have thrown it up for a shot. Tony Yelk missed the extra point earlier from 29 yards. Yelk, the sixth-year senior, bangs it through the middle. And Iowa State comes away with points. And they lead 9-0. A little more than a touchdown underdog, a nine-point lead. Drew Tate walking to the locker room for Iowa. So Iowa State will have a backup quarterback to go against when you come back. Nine-nothing Iowa State leading Iowa. 4-12 left second quarter. Iowa State, big build-up, trying to beat their disliked in-state rival when they're at number eight in the country. Crowd of over 50,000. Iowa State has played a very good half, and now on top of that, their starting quarterback, the first team All Big Ten quarterback last year, Drew Tate, out with injury. Damian Sims, Albert Young set to get the Yelp kickoff, and into the win should be an opportunity to return here for the Hawkeyes, who need something good to happen desperately. Tony Yelp gets into it. Very good kick. The return by Sims will be shy of the 20-yard line. Caleb Bird, the backup defensive back, comes and makes the play. Long field to go for Iowa State, for Iowa. Here he comes. Jason Manson, 6'1", 195-pound junior, now taking over for Drew Tate. We'll be back. Hawkeyes trailing by nine, and here comes Jason Manson into the game. Why? Bam! Head-to-head. -head. Drew Tate, after he threw an interception, went helmet-to-helmet -helmet with Paris. He was knocked a little dingy. They're looking at him at the sideline. Then they take him into the, the house. They want to investigate and examine him a little bit further. He's Manson. got one interception, but here's Manson. And he throws incomplete on first down. On the pass intended for Herb Grigsby. So Manson, the only statistics he recorded before the opener and against Ball State, uh, there was a lot of garbage time to be had, was game two of the 2003 season, a 49-point win over Buffalo. He had two rushing attempts and one passing attempt in that game. Had no stats at all last year and got some playing time, as Tim mentioned, last week in the blowout over Ball State. 56-0 over Ball State. He comes in. Plays most of the second half, goes nine for nine, almost 100 yards. Albert Young, Champ Davis, the backs. Left guard, right guard, beg your pardon, moved. Mike Elgin's five yard flag will make it second and 15. You know, let me say this as you look at the penalty. Ball start, offense, number Kirk Clark. But down in there, second. Kirk Ferentz is one of those guys who has complete control of his team. They're well-disciplined. They're organized. You know, he worked with Bill Bilicek with the Cleveland Browns. And so he's a picture of calm. But you know he's going to light him up at halftime because this is not what he expects of his Iowa Hawkeyes. A run with Young. Nowhere to go. Tim Dobbins, that uh, top newcomer in the Big 12 defensively last year, made the play. Jason Manson went to high school in Bloomfield, Connecticut. There are not a lot of Division I prospects out of the Nutmeg State, but Manson was one of them. Bloomfield was the best team in the state. He threw for a bunch of touchdowns, very few interceptions. So he was highly sought after and highly recruited. A lot of people back in Connecticut have asked him, why don't you transfer? Because Tate's won the job. You're both juniors. You're never going to get your chance. He did in the blowout against Ball State. Didn't miss a pass. His first pass is in two years. Now he's got a huge opportunity. Pressure hit hard as he threw. Deflected and intercepted by LaMarcus Hicks, who's going all the way. Touchdown, Cyclones! <laughs> Whole stadium is rocking. Woo!
Jason Berryman came in with the pressure. They hit the backup quarterback, Manson, in the mouth as he threw. Hicks comes up with the interception. Yelk is on to add the extra point. Not pretty, but a point. Iowa State, a near double-digit underdog, a double-digit lead at home in the in-state battle of Iowa. Three, down 16 to nothing to Iowa State. His kickoff humbling toward the sideline. He could have let it go out of bounds. Instead, it's fielded by Sims, who does a nice job taking it to the 33-yard line. Penalty marker down as Alvin Bowen, the reserve linebacker, made the tackle. To come back with a hole. And Iowa's going to start inside of its own 10 yard line. During the return, hold number 80 on the returning team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Boy, what pressure by the Cyclones. First of all, Jason Berryman comes off the edge and is right in the face of Manson. He releases it a little bit early, but it was a bad read on his part anyway. Here comes the pass now. If you just freeze it right there, this is zone coverage. You see the red jerseys. The ball can't be fit in there. All of a sudden, Carper gets the tip, and any time the ball is tipped, the defenders have the advantage because they're all coming to the ball. And LaMarcus Hicks, as he did against Kansas State earlier uh, last year, intercepts it for the touchdown. Marcus Schnorr comes in as the running back, and he gains just a couple of yards. Babylon Halftime Show coming up. John Saunders, Craig James, Aaron Taylor, they're standing by at the shoe in Columbus, getting us set for the big game tonight with Texas, Ohio State. So of the highlights of the Notre Dame win in Ann Arbor, and a talk about how Ohio State should handle the quarterback situation tonight at 8 Eastern when they take on Texas here on ABC. Mike, it's been almost a perfect half by the Cyclones defense. They had seven interceptions last year, or 17 last year. They have two already in this game. Berryman being stretched out. He's out. Young is in at the running back, and here is Albert cutting back into the waiting arms of Nick Mosier, the senior strong safety out of Fort Dodge, Iowa. A co-captain stopped at the 15-yard line. We'll have third down coming up. And a timeout taken here by the Cyclones. Defensive coordinator John Skladani was very confident when we talked to him yesterday about his game plan. He wants to take away the short game first, which he did early. He wants to use the zone pressure schemes and the blitzes when needed. He's done that. They've got their two interceptions. They have played extremely well defensively. There's John right there. What a job he's done in his game plan. He is the defensive coordinator for Dan McCartney, who, as we told you, the Affleck trivia question, has coached a 3,000-yard passer here, Seneca Wallace, Troy Davis, a 2,000-yard rusher, a 1,000-yard receiver, and Lane Danielson. What three other coaches have done it? Division 1A, one of them you'll see tonight on ABC. Mac Brown, Dennis Franchoni, of course, he did it with LaDainian Tomlinson at TCU, and John Robinson back in the USC heyday. The key there, Timmy, as we try to figure this out, failed miserably yesterday, yes, we did. was going by the 2,000-yard rushers, because that's the most unique set in college football history. And, uh, Mac Brown, Coach Fran, John Robinson, and Dan McCarney, the answer to that question. It's a good thing that this isn't the game that our buddies Greasy and Swan and Brad Nestler do because they have a little competition. They've got their bets. We would have been an over there for sure. <laughs> no shot at that one. They keep the tally all year. They do. <laughs> Third and four. Champ Davis in to protect the backup quarterback, Jason Manson who is hit as he throws incomplete trying to complete it in the flat Berryman who was stretching out a couple of downs ago comes in for pressure and Iowa State's going to get the ball back with 209 left in the half no question in my mind right now Kirk Ferentz just wants to get out of this half with no more scores from the Cyclones he wants to get his guy and he wants to see how Tate is and he wants to get Manson a little more comfortable but right now he definitely is not and defense for makers turn to punt. Iowa continuing to sort out its punting very high with the win. Good kick. Brian Baum fair catching at the 34. 54 with the wind yards for the junior out of Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Fenstermaker and John Gallery were virtually even after 80 preseason punts. So they have uh, alternated here today. 
You know, let's take a look at our Chrysler passing playbook and go back to the play. This is Manson. He's a little bit rusty, as you said. Didn't really get a lot of snaps. Very safe play. He's just going to try to throw a little skinny post. He reads zone, hopefully, but what he doesn't account for is the fact that the pressure's coming and he released it early. Then you stop it right here and all the red jerseys are around him. He's got three red jerseys around him. He has no shot of fitting that in unless the pass is perfect. And even then, he didn't have a great chance. Tipped and picked off and touchdown. From the 35, two timeouts left. Meyer, long toss is dropped. Intended for John Davis, his junior receiver, who led the team last year with 48 receptions. Second down coming up. Here's Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator. Barney was uh, for a long time with Nebraska as an uh, offensive line coach with Frank Solich. What a win for Frank last night in Athens as Ohio beat Dave Wanstead in Pittsburgh. Wanstead 0 for 2 out of the gate with the Panthers. Picks with the run on second and 10. See if Iowa will call a timeout and try to shorten the game up here a little bit. The Hawkeyes do take it with 149 to go. Chad Greenway in on the tackle. We haven't called Greenway and Abdul Hodge very much here in the first half. No, Chad Greenway, he's been cheating up. They've, they, they've done their scouting. They, they knew he was going to be in the line. They knew he'd be cheating up. They knew he'd be coming off the edge. They locate him, and they've been picking him up all day. Two first-team all-Big Ten linebackers. Greenway out of South Dakota, Mount Vernon, South Dakota, where the population barely fit in one section here in the upper deck. 477 is the population of his hometown. Well, we talked about it tonight. It's the game everyone's been talking about all offseason. Number two, Texas, steps into the shoe. Let's say hello to some of the 100,000 on the banks of the Olentangy. They are tailgating with their big TVs, hanging out in Columbus, getting ready to welcome the horns tonight, 8 Eastern, on ABC, Brent and Gary and Jack will be there in Columbus. And boy, we cannot wait to get back to the hotel and watch that one tonight. And we'll be back at the Horseshoe. Next right there on the Olin Tangy next week. Ohio State and San Diego State. You know, the Iowa defense in this ball game has limited the Cyclones to fewer than 100 yards for four straight years. In the first half, Michael, Iowa State has 66 yards already. So they pretty much had their way, which has allowed them also to get into their game plan with the passing attack. It's been a balanced attack, and it's been effective. And the mistakes, three turnovers. Usually you lose the turnover battle, you lose the game. And it's allowed Iowa State to jump out on top here. This is third and ten out of the timeout. Myers' throw is complete. Going to be just shy of the first down. A half yard shy, Austin Flynn there at the 43. And uh, the timeout is taken as they check the spot. And let's see as it's fourth down now if uh, Iowa does, in fact, and they do stop the clock here. I think he's found something that he likes in Austin Flynn. He had uh, seven catches last week. He already has three in this game. All right, update from New York, and let's check in with Sam Ryan. Sam? All right, Mike and Tim, we go to Seattle. We're Golden Bears duo of Ayub and Jordan clicking here. Ayub, 58 yards to Robert Jordan. The two have connected on all three scores for Cal over Washington. They're leading this one now 21 to 10 late in the second quarter. Let's send it back to you. Okay, Sam, thank you. Of course, uh, California having to make a quarterback change because of the injury week one, able to get three touchdowns in the air on the board in Seattle. Well, Iowa trying to get the kick into the wind. Ed Hinkle may have a chance to return this punt. It is fourth and a yard. Troy Blankenship able to get it away. Hinkle on the run, has some room. Had to put on the brakes to elude the one cover gunner and brings it down to the 34-yard line. So nine on the return. The punt was 34. Iowa one timeout, 89 seconds, and 66 yards to cover. One of the few times all day that they've had decent field position to actually start a drive, start a possession. Yeah, before the second quarter started, every drive started inside the 21. They had one drive here where Iowa was able to get the ball to 32. So this is the best field position of the day for the Hawkeyes. During that timeout, they or during the Cyclones possession, they had a chance to sit Manson down and go over some things and see if he's more comfortable. Oh, that should have been intercepted. Just out of the hands of Matt Robertson, who otherwise has had a great first half and 
through into coverage again. Yeah, so you, you, this is not Ball State. This is a much, much better defense. Through into coverage. This is his look. He's looking left all the way. He's not going through a progression. Never sees anything. Doesn't see Robertson, the linebacker, coming. Didn't see the quarterback. It's kind of interesting He's here. He's lucky to get a pick. If he sure is. It's interesting for Iowa. Would you just run it, get to the halftime, get to the locker right, room? Right. Not risk a big mistake here. They picked up Berriman on a stunt, giving Manson the corner to run and try to complete it. Was Hick a lot of bounds? Yes, he was out. Yep. Didn't get his feet down. Nice job holding on, but couldn't get his toes down. Tried to drag it. I only need that one foot. He tried to drag it, just couldn't get it in time. Always hold up with Hinkle. Remember the spectacular catch he made at Michigan last year where he uh, made a near impossible grab in the end zone. He's very close here. He's got great body control, too. Looks like the old Raymond Berry. That is close. Well, I'll tell you what. It's a tough angle to see, but it was, this is a better angle. They were just outside. I mean, if he didn't cut his toenails last night, he might have still been in bounds there. <laughs> wow. He's got great body control, doesn't he? Absolutely. Third and ten. They need to get to the 44. Four-man rush. Some time for the outlet throw. And Champ Davis takes it to the 44-yard line. It's going to be right at the mark, depending on the spot. Clock will stop for the measurement with a minute 11 to go. I think he's going to be just short. We'll have to bring the chain gang on. The linesman is holding that spot. He's your mark. Hey, you know what I didn't get in last week? You know what the coolest part of Ohio Stadium is? The, the, the horseshoe? We did our interviews up in one of the rooms up there. Right, right across from the room where we did our interviews on Friday with the uh, Miami of Ohio players, the chain gang has their own conference room. Tuesday. They were able to go up there and you know, rest at halftime, get warm during the winter, cool during the summer. I don't know many chain gang conference rooms during get the season. Get their hot dogs? I, maybe. I get, get their sodas? I don't know what you eat as a chain gangsman. They're going to be short. Well, let's see what Iowa will do here on fourth down after Manson's first completion of the afternoon. This guy's doing a great job. Very difficult job. This is a short tackle. They've got to make the stop. They've got to make him. Robertson comes up. Overran it a little bit, tucked that tail, and had the lean a little bit, but made the stop short of the first. How do you get that job? Which job is The chain gang, guys. How do you get how do you get hired? Who do you apply to? You just gonna hang around? We gotta explore that. I want to know how you get that job. Timeout taken here <laughs> with a minute five to go. Iowa State takes the timeout. Because if Iowa goes you do and they this stop. on purpose, don't you? <laughs> no, you I, research stuff like this just to stump the I have never in my life thought about that. I mean, who are these guys? I, I thought they were high school officials, and then I was told that they aren't. They're oh, volunteers. They're, they're volunteer guys. You know, there are guys from the chain gangs around college football laughing at us. Saying, so next week, I will come back with an answer for you, okay? I'm sure next week we'll come back with a lot of answers. <laughs> <laughs> More Fax machine right now is overloading. More insignificant information to add. The Valvoline Halftime Show is coming up. John Craig and Aaron are on the road. They have the highlights, the analysis. What do you think of Notre Dame beating Michigan today in the big house, 17-10? They look terrific. They look terrific. And Charlie had his team ready for the game. They came out. They scored on their first possession. Then they took a shot in the mouth from Michigan. They held up. And then down the stretch again, they were strong. I, I'm telling you, a lot of people were still skeptical today after they saw what Pittsburgh did. Yes. But Notre Dame came out and was every bit as good as they were the first week, and they continue to get better under Charlie Weiss. The guys are also going to talk about the Big Ten, Big 12 game coming up tonight in primetime on ABC. Texas, Ohio State. What would you do if you were Jim Tressel with the quarterback situation? You've got to start Justin Zwick. I said this last week. He certainly has earned it. And if they didn't, it would be a crime. But he is started, and he deserves it. But I also would work in Troy Smith. And I would work him in because you're going to need him. And really, he's the more talented, gifted quarterback. Iowa chooses to punt here on fourth. And I'd say about 18 inches. Don't want to risk turning it over in your own territory. So John Gallery is on to kick it away. Iowa State will let it go. It is a touchback. 57 yards on the kick. Only nets 37. Cyclones will take over at the 20. 57 seconds left and just one timeout. And I would imagine if you were Iowa State, you'd run the ball, get out of dodge, and say job well done in the no first half. No question about it. You don't want to take any gambles here. You've played a great first half. You don't want to take any unnecessary chances. I'm not a big believer in trends like this, but this has been a series 
that if you lead at halftime, you've won the game more often than not over the last few years. Take a knee. There you go. Can't do anything but feel good about the first 30 minutes for Iowa State. Team that has led at halftime has won, what, the last 13? In this series, yep. Leading after the first quarter, it's 13 to 15, and 14 of the last 15 for the leaders at the break. All 16 Iowa State points have come off turnovers. And we'll take this uh, one more snap, and the sellout overflow crowd at Jack Trice Stadium will cheer the Cyclones into the locker room here at halftime. Susie Schuster's down there with Iowa's head coach, Kirk Ferrell. Suze? Mike, thank you. Let's talk about Drew Tate. How's your quarterback? Well, we'll find out at halftime. He took a shot, and uh, yeah, we'll find out how he's doing at halftime. What's your confidence level in Jason Manson? Well, we have tremendous confidence in Jason. That, that's not the issue right now. The issue is how we're playing. You know, we've just uh, shot ourselves in the foot way too many times against a very good football team. Four turnovers in the first half. Your team usually very stingy with that. What happened, and how do you turn that around? I don't know. We, uh, we've been good in the past. We're not good in that first half. Certainly all three of their scores are a result of that. You know, it's uh, very obvious. We have to clean up our game real fast. And we need to get going. Coach, thank you. Mike? Susie, thank you. Kirk Ferentz in Iowa with work to do to win this in-state battle. They trail 16-0. The Babylon Halftime Show coming up. ABC Sports presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from your ABC station. It is a rivalry that has spanned a century, was dormant for 40 years, and has come back with a vengeance as two teams come in with a little conference championship title to claim. The first half quarterbacking was sharp on the Iowa State side, led to injury on the Iowa side. Drew Tate injured, headed back to the locker room after his concussion. His replacement, Manson, was intercepted, and LaMarcus Hicks took it to the house. Iowa State, all 16 points coming off of Iowa turnovers, leading as we start the third quarter with Susie Schuster and Tim Brandt. Mike Tirico here at Ames, news item number one as we head to the third quarter. Drew Tate out for the rest of the game with a concussion. So what does that do to Iowa now, Timmy? Well, Manson's got to come in, and certainly he's got to get more comfortable than he was in the first half, Mike. He wasn't comfortable. He threw the interception. He threw the deflections, and he just wasn't getting it done. I'm sure they've talked to him and tried to settle him down. The other thing they have to do is just get back into their game plan. They've been turning the ball over. That's not like Iowa. Take a look at the highlights, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All 16 points have come off turnovers. First, red jersey swarming. Matt Robinson gets the fumble recovery. The high snap. Overdone. Here he comes. There's Brenneman, he's got it, and there's the fumble, Berryman get the fumble that led to the touchdown. Then it was Stevie Paris with the interception, and then it was LaMarcus Hicks, and he took one 28 yards into the house. Just read it, reacted, he was in a zone defense and took it back, got some good blocking touchdown. What's happening is the red jerseys are swarming, and so far they've been dominant, forcing the turnovers and turning those into 16 points. Yeah, it's not a drastically unbalanced stat sheet after the first half, as you look at Manson, Talking about what will happen when they get the ball back. Iowa State gets the ball first, but certainly Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, has spent some time with the junior inexperienced quarterback about what will happen when Iowa gets on the field. I'll tell you something else you'll see Iowa do. They've got to go to Sean Green, the freshman. He came in last week with 116 yards, 116 powerful bulldozing yards. Guarantee you we'll see him in the second half. All right, Kyle Schlicker from Ankeny, Iowa. That's between uh, here and Des Moines. And she drive to Ames in the middle of the state. Iowa City, a couple of hours to the east. It's, uh, like most in-state rivals, it you know, separates family. You're either a Cyclone or a Hawkeye, many times from birth. And uh, the fans get to deal with that separation head-to-head -head athletics throughout the season, but especially on the football field. One time each year. No return as it's kicked out of the end zone. DeAndre Jackson couldn't get his hands on it. And Susie Schuster can update us on a couple of issues. Susie. Well, guys, one thing, running back Albert Young for Iowa had some cramping. He got an IV. He got a lot of fluids pumped into his body. 
Coach Farron says he'll be just fine. Drew Tate's so angry about not coming back with that concussion. Now, I did speak to Iowa State coach Don McCarney, who said he loves the way his kids are handling the ball. That 4-1 to one turnover ratio, he says, is way in our favor, of course. He, th he says if we keep playing like this and hold on to the ball, he loves his chance of this big upset. Well, Dan McCarney also knows that the Hawkeyes are a better football team than they were in the first half and that they're going to come back and take their shots. First down for Brett Meyer. Fakes the run, throws complete to John Davis. He was right at the first down line. Actually had the first down, kind of came back on the other side of it. Javon Johnson to tackle, and we'll see at the mark. It's going to be right at the line. It looks to be a first down for Iowa State. It is over the third. John Davis was rather quiet in the first half. 48 receptions last year, the leading receiver. Davis just hauled in his third. Two catches for 12. Now, Myers' numbers, not bad. In the first half, 9 of 16, 77 yards. His long completion was only 12 yards. Here's Stevie Hicks stopped behind the line of scrimmage. First time a disrupting play by Abdul Hodge, the senior out of Fort Lauderdale. First team, all Big Ten. With and the play. Abdul is showing some cramping signs. It's going to be tough. Always is. All right, now time for the Pacific Life game summary. Tim, here are the numbers at the break. Well, you mentioned it. There's really not that much difference when you break this down statistically until you get to the turnovers. And then, of course, the turnovers are four for uh, Iowa. And, of course, that turned into 16 points. Pretty simple equation there in the first half. Hicks lost the yard officially. Second and 11 for Meyer. Good pressure, and he's brought down for a loss of about three by Ken Iwebama. Again, if you are with us earlier, that is the correct pronunciation of his name uh, adjusted. It is Iwebama, and it is a sack. Mike, Norm Parker's defensive game plan was to keep the blockers off the linebackers, contain and funnel, and let them make plays. And that's what we're seeing in this series, but we did not see it that much in the first half. And this unit, Tim, you would imagine, you know, third quarter that they were banging some lockers in there as players, not the coaches getting up tight, saying, guys, this drive, we've got to set some tone and get some momentum back on our side. Give our offense good field position because they have the wind in the third quarter. They'll be into it in the fourth. Meyer on third down, has room to run, but won't pick up the first down. Chased out of bounds at the 32. He'll gain five, and they'll punch it away. And it is always the defensive unit that can make that statement, and they did, Mike. They came out. They made the stop here. They forced the Cyclones to punt. I think you're going to see a different Hawkeye team here in the second half. I mean, just look at this. You get a good push up front. You've got them contained. All right, now you have to get your linebackers and secondary to come and cut the field off and get him out of bounds. They knew where the sticks were. Great job. They did it with four. Ed Hinkle is back. Troy Blankenship punts into the wind. And a very short kick will be good field position for Iowa. Just a 28-yard punt. And the Hawkeyes will take over at their own 40-yard line uh, right at their best field position of the entire afternoon. So it's on the head of Jason Manson out of Bloomfield, Connecticut. Suburb of the state capital of Hartford up in the Nutmeg State. Again, if you weren't with us earlier, he only threw one pass in his first two years as a Hawkeye. That was in his freshman year. Nine passes, completed them all against Ball State last week. One for six and a pick six after coming in for the injured Drew Tate. Albert Young, despite the cramps, in the game and looking good. 16 yards, first down into Cyclone territory at the 44 and back downstairs for Susie. Mike, I asked Dan McCartney, what would that change in the game be if Drew Tate is out and Jason Manson's in? He said, we know all about this kid. We've been watching tape on him. He had a lot of experience last year. We know all of our tendencies on him. We know everything he does. They're prepared for him. He talked to his guys about what to expect, but they're ready and prepared for this quarterback change. Tate is so much of the out. Without Drew Tate, Iowa doesn't share the Big Ten title last year. I agree with that. I also agree that the Hawkeyes are going to be a different ball club this half. Here is another young run into the secondary to the 32 yards. So all of a sudden, Iowa has come out and banged 28 yards in two snaps. Tim Dobbins the tackle after the gain of 12. Watch the offensive line. Jones, Yonda, Ferentz, Elgin, and Gates. Go ahead and roll it. You'll just see them. They all slide down to the right. Now stop it right there, and you can see the cutback alleys. Look at this alley right here. There's not a defender in sight. They're all behind him. And it's just that little trip that stopped the touchdown. He gets by that. High steps by there. It's a touchdown. Marthus at the 32. First down. Third straight carry for Young. That time right into the waiting arms of Dobbins. Senior out of Music City. Nashville, Tennessee. Gain of a couple. 
home of the great Ernest Tubbs. Among others, you're absolutely right. Young from Moorestown, New Jersey, is taking it over 100 yards now, 124 yards as he checks out. Young, who said he didn't run well last week, had a touchdown run against Iowa State, but was injured in this game last season. Matter of fact, he was injured on a tackle by Sean Moorhead. Ed Hinkle right there. That's the guy that Manson wants to go after. Second and nine, he's pressured. There's some of that elusiveness that won three consecutive state high school football championships in Connecticut. Good scramble of third and four coming up. Well, it was decisive because he looked over at Hinkle and right away he felt the pressure and just released and ran. And that's a good thing. You don't want him to hesitate, lose yardage. Watch his head. His head now immediately goes to the left side, but feels the pressure and sprints to the right. It's a great decision by the quarterback to pick up positive yards. Brings up third down and... Well, a makeable situation with four to go. From here, the field goal will be 44 yards. Wind at their back. And they really want to make a statement on this opening drive. Play clock down to five. Manson settles in and throws. It is dropped by the tight end Chandler incomplete. And it will be fourth down. So Chandler got the release off the line, settled in, but couldn't handle the low one. Field goal attempt coming up. Mike, it was low, but it's still hitting between the eight and the seven. It went right through his gut. He's got to make that catch. That's a first down play. That's a tight end's catch, isn't it? Watch this. I mean, he throws it a little bit. This is a catchable ball, though. I mean, it hits him right there, and he lets it go right through his arms. Now, we saw Schlick, Schlichter the kicker, Schlicker the kicker, making <laughs> 57 yarder before the game. That's right. The wind is his back. Uh, Andy Fenstermeister, Fenster maker will hold. <laughs> it's a 44 yarder. For Schlicker, the kicker, and Kyle bangs it through. First points for the Hawkeyes, so a very good start to the third quarter. Defense, three and outs, Iowa State. They get good field position with the wind. Schlicker connects from 44 yards. 63, Cyclone. In Ames, that's the northwest corner of this stadium. That hillside has uh, been filled in. They still sell seats. After all, the seating in the stadium is filled for the fans to come watch the game. Some folks on blankets on that hillside, and uh, all the seats filled here. They'll be up over 50,000 for the crowd. We're scalping tickets for four or five times face value when we were out in the parking lot earlier. This kickoff is uh, returnable on the bounce, but DeAndre Jackson forced to take it too deep in the end zone, and Iowa State will bring it out to the 20. Well, you saw the guys at halftime with the halftime show from Columbus, Texas, Ohio State. Number two and number four. They've never met before like this game. It's the Big 12 against the Big 10 in a very good intersectional pre-conference game. ABC Sports. We'll have it for you tonight live, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Brett Musburger, Gary Danielson, Jack Aroot will bring it to you from the shoe. Game three of our triple header. Stevie Hicks with the carry. He'll gain about three yards to the 23, and that line of scrimmage that was controlled by Iowa State early in the game is now moving over to the Hawkeye side, Tim. Defense has come to the party. There's no question about it. Hawkeyes being a lot more aggressive. They're containing their luggage, their uh, leverage. Watch this. There's the line of scrimmage. Stand them up, fill with the linebackers, and they get there, and they do a nice job of that. There's Hodge. There's Greenway. You're going to be calling those names a lot here in the second half. Abdul Hodge and Chad Greenway, not only both first-team Big Ten All-Conference linebackers, but best of friends, the two seniors. Here is Meyer looking for an open receiver and just threw it to an empty spot, incomplete. So Iowa getting heat and coverage. Ryan Madison hauling in to force Meyer to spit it out. Third down. Webema and Madison doing a better job now in containing, getting some movement and pressure upfield. That's allowing the linebackers to do their thing. I'm telling you, this is a different Hawkeye team that we're seeing here in the second half. It's one of those body language situations, too. Iowa State's taking a punch right now. They're standing around, questioning faces. The Iowa guys are edging towards the sideline. The punt team's ready to come on. Momentum starting to make a slow turn here, middle of the third quarter. Third and seven. Here is Meyer. He's flushed again. Able to keep his balance, but he's going to be shy of the first down. There's the linebacker play we've seen from Hodge. He came across the field, chased him down. After Webema put the heat on, 
Back-to-back -back three and outs for the Hawkeyes. Hodge still getting some of those cramping things, but here he is right there. Now watch him move. Read, 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 slide. Sees he's going to start to run, get over there. Now pursue inside out and make the tackle. You know what they did that time? They had uh, Greenway actually out in coverage. Mm. The other outside linebackers showing pressure here on the punt. Blankenship gets away. A rocket shot into the wind. What a kick. Hinkle had to pick it up back at the six. Now as Iowa State still okay in coverage, a vicious block as Hinkle returns out to the 23-yard line. What a block put on there. Now it's starting to look like that rivalry we've heard so much about between Iowa and Iowa State. Ryan Baum was on the receiving end of a big block. 68 on the kick, 12 on the return. And a penalty marker's down. Back at about the 40-yard line. During the kick, holding 33 white on the returning team. 10 yards from the post scrimmage kick and portion spot. First down. Marcus Simmons, the backup running back, whistled on the play. What a bell ringer. What a tackle. Robertson, the linebacker, who had the fumble recovery earlier in the first quarter, made the cleanup hit on Hinkle after the big block. It was thrown by Mark Marquand Dawkins. Watch this thing. Ooh, the block in the left-hand side. But, I mean, that's a bell ringer. Are you kidding me? That'll loosen your feelings and put the eyes in the back of your head. Well, Ryan Baum returns punts for Iowa State. He's not supposed to absorb punts on coverage like that. This game's getting salty now. Mm -hmm. What I liked about the rivalry, when we talked to Kirk Ferentz and we talked to Dan McCarty, guys who were on Hayden Fry's staff together, a great staff that Hayden Fry had back in the uh, early 90s in Iowa City, in the late 80s, there's a lot of respect players and coaches there's not a lot of anger and dirtiness and animosity but a clean hard hitting very respectful series between these two schools first down albert young is the back and iowa state's defense has to answer a bell here gain of less than a yard well hayden fry turned the program around that so sorely needed it and hayden as you say put a great staff together but he is some kind of coach you were looking at the numbers before the ball game i mean he took a program that was basically dead and made it into a, one of the top programs in the country yeah 1981 a rose bowl trip for iowa and all you hawkeye fans remember it had been 23 years since the hawkeyes represented the big 10 in pasadena and that was the staff that both mccarney and ference were on together again albert young right side got a nice block to get into the secondary now to the 15-yard line. Good block by Mike Elgin on the edge to free him. LaMarcus Hicks ended up making the tackle. First down. You know, with Simmons struggling with an injury, he's got the ham, Young had to step up. He really had to, to make a, a, an effort to show that he is the running back they thought he would be. Now, he's coming back from an ACL, but you can see he is really, really running well. Although, that was a kind of a funny little stop he made there on the sideline. You're right. When I was watching it live, I was worried that he may have hurt himself. 17 carries, 139 yards for Young. Marcus Schnorr replaces him as the lone back. A little power football from the Hawkeyes as Schnorr takes it across the 20-yard line. We didn't see power football from Iowa last year. We go back to 2002. Uh, in recent memory, there haven't been as many offensive lines in the Big Ten as good as the crew that Iowa had. But now, last year, the run game was decimated with injuries. They only ran it for 73 yards a game. So un-Iowa-like. Second worst in the nation. And that has been a focus of this team this year. With Kirk's son, Brian, as the center. Get some toughness back on that offensive front. So unbalanced in yardage last year. Yet successful. Play action. Nathan in trouble. Able to use his ability to run for the first down. So a nice job by Jason Manson. And he's being more decisive, Mike. I mean, he's not sitting back there guessing and hesitating and looking un unsure of himself. He made a decision. He went with it. And he showed his athletic ability. Here it is. Now, it's just play action. But he feels that there were some blocks missed up there. The pressure was coming, so he just tucked and ran. Didn't wait. Knew where the markers were. Very wisely got to the sideline. Manson looks different this half, too, doesn't he? Sure. It's so hard to do, too, to be game aware and game sharp. But this right now is as many snaps as he's seen in a game since high school. Manson throws, dropped. 
It was a good throw. It should have been held on to, but it was just in and out of the hands of Marcus Schnoor. The backup running back out of DeWitt here in Iowa. And when they look at the numbers of Manson when this is game is done, whether they win or lose, you know, we saw Chandler drop one and hit him right between the eight and the seven. And watch this. Again, he uses his feet, his escape ability to buy some time, get the pass out there. And that ball by Schnoor has got to be caught. I mean, it's right there. It's perfectly thrown, and he just lets it get away from him. He lost focus for that split second. Still snores. Albert Young flexes that leg that you talked about, Tim, earlier. Being the backup quarterback, your backup tailback. It's getting loud. It's getting hostile. Snore. Too many numbers on that side. Good play by Matt Robertson. Let's send it to New York before third down. And here's Sam Ryan with an update. Sam. And Mike, think, could this be the Pontiac game-changing performance? Notre Dame, Michigan, Wolverine building momentum. Chad Henney, quarterback, sneaks him inside the one-yard line. He was ruled down. Reviews show he fumbled. Irish recovered, held on for the 17-10 win. Nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword, Pontiac. Sammy replay worked very well in that game. As it has here today, third and eight. Four-man rush. Manson's throw is incomplete. Intended for Quentin Solomon. Good coverage by Jackson. DeAndre's blanket coverage allows a punt for Iowa. Again, they get pretty good protection for him. They lock up, and he just kind of rushes a little bit. Good coverage out there. He threw it to the up and the outside where he's supposed to throw it. Just got away from him a little bit. Andy Fenstermaker is on to punt. Ryan Baum, who took the big hit on the Iowa punt return, catches at the 22 and loses a yard. Good coverage by the Hawkeyes. Charles Godfrey comes up and makes the play on a 50-yard punt with a negative one return. Iowa State takes over the offense back-to-back -back three and outs. What will they do this series? Schuster and Tim Brandt, Mike Tirico on the campus of Iowa State, Ames, Iowa, for this annual in-state battle. It was a stretch where Iowa just shut this thing down. They won 15 times in a row when Iowa State's program was in the depths. But all of a sudden, Iowa State got a win. Then they won five in a row in a series, and then the last two games yep. have been won by Iowa. So a lot of back and forth in this series. Iowa, the ranked team this year, trailing 16-3 and a good first down carry for Greg Coleman who takes it to the 30-yard line a pickup of eight yards. Greg Coleman showing power six foot 225 pound sophomore again it was zone blocking he cut back and then he carried blockers or tacklers rather for the last three or four yards. Second and two coming up of course if you're just joining us the headline story of this game was Drew Tate the quarterback for Iowa injured in the second quarter concussion out the remainder of the game so they've had to go to the backup quarterback Jason Manson out of Connecticut Iowa State trying to pick up its first first down of this half and just a gain of two it'll be very close for Brett Meyer one of the great storylines Tim is that both coaches have known each other for a long time they were both part of Hayden Fry's great staffs at Iowa and speaking of Hayden Fry, two decades at Iowa, the former head coach joins us via phone out in Nevada as he's watching today. Coach Fry, is this a tough day to watch because of your affection for Coach McCarney and your obvious passion for the Iowa program? Well, it's great to uh, you guys invite me to join you. You're doing a wonderful job covering it. We've got a tremendous ball game going. I'm really impressed with uh, Iowa State and uh, the defense. They've got four turnovers, and if the Hawkeyes don't start getting some turnovers, they're in real trouble. You know, I, Hayden, I remember sitting there listening to you and Keith Jackson tell stories the first time I came out to see you for one of your games, and <laughs> I remember you talking about how rewarding it was to have turned that program around and get it winning again, and, and obviously Kirk's doing the same thing and keeping that tradition alive. Well, Coach Ferris and his staff have done a wonderful job. They've done a, a, a great job of recruiting. and uh, But I'm real concerned right now because he's lost uh, a tremendous quarterback in Drew Tate. Uh, the number two quarterback looks like he has a lot of ability, but he, has, he doesn't have any experience. Uh, penalty marker there, Coach, on the late hit as a uh, nice play was made by Chad Greenway after Meyer escaped. But the late hit will give it a first down for Iowa State. Able to sustain a drive. Coach Fry, in the eight years prior to your coming to Iowa. After the play, late hit, number 47 on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. 
first down. Mitch King with the penalty. Those eight years, Iowa only won 22 games. In your 20 years, seven wins per season on average, 143. What was the biggest difference maker in turning around the Iowa program for you? Well, we inherited uh, some young men that had been kicked around, and it's pretty easy to motivate people that are down, and you uh, have a good coaching staff that shows them uh, and gives them the faith that they can win. It, it's a fun place. The, the people of Iowa are great, great people, and, you know, it's wonderful that both Iowa and Iowa State both have good programs. Here's a run by Coleman for a yard to the 48. Iowa State's program was down, and then one of your old assistants, Dan McCarney, turned the program around here at Iowa State. Do you see similarities in what Dan has been able to do here with what you were able to do in turning around Iowa? Well, I, I'm extremely proud of Dan. He and Kirk uh, are both just like my sons, and they're wonderful people, wonderful coaches. Uh, every program has their pluses and minuses, and I'm not, you know, I'm not for sure what all the problems were at Iowa State and letting us win 15 straight. <laughs> but Dan has got it going now. He's been to uh, four bowl games the last five years and got a lot of momentum. Myers' pass is complete to John Davis, and the split end takes it for first down. Well, Hayden, I had a chance to visit with you down in Orlando this past winter at the All-American All uh, Banquet, and uh, gosh, it's great to talk with you here today. We're going to get back. It's going to be a fine finish of this one. Well, it really is. It's great being on your show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks, Hayden. One of the legends, Hayden Fry, who uh, turned Iowa into just a consistent winner and bowl appearances and what a staff he had a staff that dots the big dots college football for that matter I mean uh, almost a third of the Big Ten came off one Hayden Fry staff in 81 third and one the keeper for Meyer is a first down the show coach mm -hmm. was based on Hayden absolutely this is some drive by one of his former assistants Dan McCartney's offense but Dan has brought that passion and he's turned around Iowa State by understanding what goes on here and a lot of it were the examples that he learned with Hayden Fry on that staff back in 1987 here's the Iowa staff with the two men involved today Kirk Ferentz among them Bill Snyder there you'll see them all close up there's Kirk and coach McCartney going head to head today then of course Bill Snyder on that staff the coach at Kansas State they beat Marshall today and Bob Stoops the head coach in Oklahoma they beat Texas today you had three coaches in the Big 12 pictured there, plus now Mike Stoops, who was on a 1981 staff of Hayden Fry, and Barry Alvarez, who ended up hiring McCarney away from Iowa. That's when he went to Wisconsin. So six guys on the same staff, Division I head coaches, all out of the Hayden Fry coaching tree. Boy, you think about Iowa and Iowa State as you look at the, the coaching tree here, and you think of all the great coaches that have been in the state. For instance, right here at Iowa State, I mean, you had Johnny Majors. He's in the Hall of Fame. You had Earl Bruce. He's in the Hall of Fame. Great Earl, coaches have gone through this state. Earl Bruce was the last success Iowa State football had, and he went to Columbus, and this program went south quickly. Here is Meyer on play action. The sophomore throws. Beautiful catch by the tall receiver, Blythe. He pulled it down right at the line for the first down at the 27-yard line. Fourth reception of the day. That one in front of Antoine Al. 